What's the secret to good X? Enthusiasm and good communication. It's just like playing euchre, you need a good partner or a good hand. Emotional intimacy. X is significantly better with someone you are emotionally connected to. In a long-term relationship it's about keeping things sexy. Foreplay and lots of it, dirty and flirty text messages throughout the day, dancing in the living room. Also a partner who wants to please you, that's very important. We are in our late 60s, been together a quarter century and it just keeps getting better, less frequent but that once a week is so darn good. Compatibility, enthusiasm, selflessness and good communication. Ignoring the queefs. Or if you're close, giggle at them. As a man who's neither particularly gifted when it comes to size or stamina, I found a good rule to abide by is to just make sure you make your lady UMS before you ever enter her. That way, even if you end up being a two-minute to win it kind of guy, everyone still got theirs. Also, toys, lube, and variety never- Also, don't be afraid to laugh at something silly during X. If I'm comfortable enough around you to want to be naked and stick my ick inside of you, then I should be comfortable enough to laugh at an accidental fart during a quiet, sensual moment. It's not that serious and it's much better to stop the moment a bit and require you to get back to the mood prior, than to ruin it with awkwardness. If you just found the equivalent of $98,100 in cash in the woods, what would you do? I would live the rest of my life stressing over why it wasn't an even $100k. The fact that it is an amount that specific makes me wonder if you actually did find $98,100 in the woods. The thing everyone misses in these scenarios is that the IRS can audit back to 5 years. So you're either voluntarily paying taxes on it, or you're hoping you don't get audited to where they'll see a big purchase you can't explain how you got the funding for. So what you do is filter the money into every day. Purchases. Every time you fill up your tank, you pay $20 in cash. When you buy groceries, you just pay 20% in cash. Big new TV? $100 in cash, the rest in the card. Something like a handyman doing a home repair you could do all in cash though. This way spending habits never change, or you aren't suspiciously just never buying groceries or gasoline. Sure, it's slow, but it's the only way. You will actually get all $98, 100 of value without running the risk of an audit. Edit. To everyone commenting about, wash it in a casino, or similar methods, that's not the point. Washing money is to hide its origin, because it originated from illegal activities. Finding money in the woods isn't illegal. And to people who have commented and DM'd me about not paying taxes and contributing to society. Thesis a hypothetical post on an imaginary situation strangers on the internet are discussing for fun. Lighten. Up. I'd buy more woods. Clearly there's a relationship to abandoned money in woods. I'd own all the forest money and you suckers will be left with the squirrels. Your bloodline is weak and you will not survive the winter. I've seen no country for old men, this doesn't end well. People who have spent time in a psych ward what is the craziest thing you've witnessed? I was in an adolescent inpatient facility for 30 days. Two people come to mind. One kid named David who was very tall for his age, I think he was only 13. He insisted on watching Friday the 13th movies on movie nights and everyone was afraid to disagree with him because of his violent nature and frequent homicidal fantasies. Hated taking his meds, and probably two or three times a week he'd brawl with the psych nurses over it. Na joke, it took five to six large grown men to overcome this kid. He was scary. The other one was just sad, a girl named Wendy. She was 13, really nice. But she always wore the same clothes and she stank really really bad. Apparently this is a common defense for kids who have repeatedly raped, assaulted by family. They don't clean themselves or they'll even soil themselves to make themselves undesirable to their abuser. I gave her a big hug every night in the common area when IT was time to go to our cells. My mother worked in an asylum in Ireland when she was about 15. This was in the early 60s. She loved working there, despite the fact that some of the patients would physically try and kill her. One patient always stuck out to her, every day he would tell my mum he was going to kill her when she finished work. She knew he loved music. Tell him she was out dancing that night, and could he wait until the next day, which he agreed to. The next day he would forget what he had said, and would threaten her again, and she'd say the same thing again. This went on for a couple of years that she worked there. A girl grabbed my toe while I was sleeping. I woke up and said, what the UCK, and she ran off. 
I went to the front desk to complain and while I'm talking to the lady, the girl jumped on my back and clung like a monkey while screaming. It was bizarre. It threw her off me and the lady just said, sorry about that, lol. I've worked in one for about two years now. The staff RA just is crazy. Here's some highlights patient got into the ceiling, couldn't get them down for a while. Patient milked themselves into their coffee. Did you know some antipsychotics make you the entire adolescent unit escaping because maintenance forgot to lock the gate. Don't worry they all came back eventually. And myself getting a concussion from a patient trying to escape, they weren't successful but at least I didn't work for 6 weeks edit. Formatting. The funniest thing I ever saw, spent total of about 3 years in in my teens and early 20s, a kid in seclusion who was having a genuinely good time making staff's life a living nightmare while he was in there, took apart the plastic mattress, tore the foam inside into small pieces, donned the empty mattress and started yelling, I'm Gumby, damn it, while tossing the pieces of foam around like confetti. Even most of the staff were laughing about it. Not a patient but an employee. Seeing countless patients attacked by other patients, many serious injuries, and a couple that came closet to death. Some of the patients' backstories can be wild. Some are almost unbelievably tragic, some are legit, some of the most foul and disgusting personal hygiene I've ever witnessed. Worst was a patient who had no concept of using a restroom, they would simply hit or asterisk ISS themselves wherever they were sitting or standing. Was real fun when they decided to do it during mealtime. I think the most shocking thing though, is how you can have some truly awful and psychotic patients, who turn out to be genuinely cool people once you get them on consistent meds. I'm talking 100% turnarounds. Of course then they get discharged, stop taking their meds, and the cycle repeats. When I was 19 and admitted the first time. I was anxious already, and could barely sleep the first night. My roommate was quiet, which didn't alarm me at first. The next day I went I to the common room, and talked to some people, and then later went back to my room, and found that my roommate had scribbled, find them, all over the walls, and was. Talking to herself. I was terrified and grabbed Anners who tried to talk to her, but couldn't make any sense out of what she said, and I asked to stay in another room. I stayed in the restraint room that night by myself, and woke up the next morning to a fight in the hallway, and nurses running past my room. Apparently one guy pulled out his ick in front of the wrong patient, and got punched. Later that week, I was cornered by the same guy who pulled out his ick, and asked if I wanted to have asterisk x in the bathroom. I literally cried after that and was ucking terrified, so I would say my whole first trip there. Not a psych ward, but an inmate at a jail I spent some time as a trustee at who was very mentally ill. Dude had apparently been arrested after being drunk for the better part of the last month straight, and W as withdrawing hard as well as obviously not being all there mentally. He was in his own isol- cell, and everyone had heard him screaming all sorts of perverse, insane, and nonsensical hits since he was put in there. A while after dark, we got called over to do a cleanup of his cell and what I saw in there was like something out of a horror movie. Blood on every surface, as well as just about every other bodily fluid one can imagine, as well as hit. Even on the ucking ceiling, and that must have been a feat to accomplish. Parts of his scalp had been pulled off and stuck toth mirror over the sink, which contained a mixture of the aforementioned bodily fluids and was no longer draining as a result. To top it off, he had pulled out many of his own teeth which were scattered just about everywhere. I didn't vomit, but I certainly would have if I had stayed around. I just nope it out and told them to get someone else to handle that. Easily one of the most disturbing things I've ever witnessed in person, and really showed me a different side of mental illness I'm not sure I'm glad to know exists. What seems harmless but is actually incredibly dangerous. Putting your feet on car dashboard. Tired driving is as dangerous as drinking and driving. Having a loose animal in the car. A safety instructor once told me doctors had to dig dog bones out of a person after it got between them and an airbag. Pool covers. It's like being wrapped in a bedsheet underwater. You cannot get free and you cannot scream for help. Once you're in the only way to get out is to be incredibly lucky and get free or have faith that someone saw or heard you fall in and hope that they get you in time. It's a lengthy, terrifying, death that's completely avoidable. Reddit. Thief of time, spreader of unresearched opinions, home of abuse and a constant stream of dopamine. Getting into a car is one of the riskiest things wedo on a daily basis. For kids, someone online with a sympathetic ear for their problems. Responsible adults will try to put you in touch with real-life help, not encourage a pattern of reliance and inappropriate intimacy. Bonus danger points on anyone who throws down, you're really mature for your age. 
Predators online work just like real-life hunting predators. Their first goal is to separate you from your herd. Garage springs and hippos. Colorful and pretty wildlife you're unfamiliar with. If you wouldn't eat a berry you're unfamiliar with, why would you pick up an animal you're unfamiliar with? Moose. Water on the roadway. Way too many people don't understand that it does not take that much water to turn your situation into life or death. Pushing someone's face into a cake, even relatively lightly, some cakes have skewers inside to support them. A seemingly harmless prank could lead to being impaled, approach it from just the wrong angle and it's bye-bye eyes. A patch of calm, smooth ocean between sections that look rough, 